Life of Chance podcasters, I am so stoked to invite Tanya Naden and to welcome Tanya Naden onto the podcast. Tan, how's your day been? Good. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks what for you having been? me on. No um, I'm worries. I'm delighted to, to have you join us. Oh, good. Um, I've been listening to your podcast, so it's been good. I didn't think I'd be on it, but hey, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> here we are. And how good for everyone that gets to listen to the life of Tan now. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with some quick fire questions. You can answer these as slowly or like with as much detail or as simply as you like. I will probe where I see necessary. Um, cool. <laughs> they won't necessarily be the quickest of, of um, it won't be the quickest of sections, but some of the, the questions can be answered very quickly. All right. Cool. Let's start with full name. Tanya Hillary Naden. <laughs> Great. Nicknames. Yeah. Chuck my middle name out there for you. Yeah. Um, Tan. Ten. Called ten. Yeah. Age? Uh, 31. Yeah. Nice. First rugby club? Oh, Uni North Hours. Hoot hoot. Hoot hoot. I was going <laughs> to say hoot hoot. 2020, uh, 2023 premieres. I'll just put that out there. Nice. Who'd you beat? <laughs> Viking. Which is, uh, right. Boys, which is which is Boo's club. So Ooh. it's always fun to joke around with her. Sorry, Boo. Second best this time. <laughs> Um, sport before rugby. Did you play? Uh, yeah, netball and touch football. Cool. What sort of level did you play those sports to? I played both. Um, I played ACT for both of them. Awesome. Did you have aspirations yeah. to play more? Yeah. Well, I think when you're a little girl playing yeah. netball, like, yeah, it's a, a big deal. Yeah. Did <laughs> but, you? Um, Sorry. Did you... uh, yeah, I, I did. I didn't know how far I could get in it, but I was yeah. like, yeah, dreaming. Let's cool. do it. Uh, how did you get into rugby? So that's a long Is it a long story. answer? Oh, oh, no. It's just part of my rugby journey answer, I'll... I guess. Like, yeah. But, like, no, no, but um, I can answer here. That's fine. It, so my friend in... 2017 like she asked me to come play and she's the wife of um Canberra Raiders player prop uh Josh Papali so she she brought me in cool. when she what's her name me. she had to play touch football she's like sure you can do this oh Seppa Seppa and Sepa. Did, did Seppa play rugby union at that stage yeah so she played for Union North Owls and convinced me to come along and have a go so it's good nice <laughs> uh when was your Wallaroos debut uh, last year at the World Cup against we- Wales. Nice. What cap number are you? Wallaroo number 197. Boom. Hero or role models growing up? Oh, that's a hard Doesn't one. have to be rugby. Anyone um, that, like you looked up to in sport or life? Oh, I don't know. It's just, I think, like, like growing up, um, in like a religious kind of household and family like we're kind of taught not to idolize like certain people so I don't really have I don't know maybe my parents yeah cool <laughs> like I just cool. and like my older siblings like yeah they were kind of my role models and, older and like older, just family like yeah yeah just like cousins and because that's who you know I grew up with that's who my friends were that's yeah that's what shaped kind of what I saw world. Yeah, that's really cool. Is your older sibling a boy or a girl? Uh, so I have two older brothers. Okay. Yeah. So they, they play sports? Well. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they played rugby growing up. Cool. Bit of, bit of everything. Um, Hobby outside rugby? Um, I feel like rugby is just my life at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> all, all the past <laughs> year, so... Uh, we'll probably just hang out with my family, hang out with yeah. my nieces and nephews. I've got yeah. quite a few. Got got eight nieces and nephews between those two brothers. So wow, um, hanging out with them, and maybe hanging out with your hubby. Yeah, and hanging out with my husband. <laughs> We're like homebodies, so hanging out means like just chilling at home, really, and 
watching TV, all our subscriptions. Yeah. So <laughs> perfect, perfect. But, yeah. What is your current job? So I work as a project manager at the moment for a building and construction um, mm-hmm. consultancy firm. Full time. Yeah, so I've been there full time. Yep, full time, and I've been with them for it'll be ten years in June. Wow. So I, yeah, I've been. Yeah, it's pretty crazy when I say it out loud because. Yeah, I didn't, I'm not really tracking. I just keep working yeah. there <laughs> and forget and how long I've been there. Does that mean that you'll be up for long service in June? Well, I think in ACT it's already like it's a, it's available to me now because it's um I think it's seven and a half, seven years maybe. Ah, how yeah, good. Like, as in it's prorated, but like, yeah, yeah, so I could take some long service already. I haven't oh. used it yet. Holding cool. out for a big trip something yeah I love that um favorite music or song that you're listening to right now oh or like a genre um, I like a bit of, yeah oh I, I always like hip-hop R&B and a bit of yeah. alternative music um Fred again the DJ been listening yeah. to a bit of his music and yeah I like Burner Boy at the moment as well so nice I'm trying to get into country because that's what our team <laughs> listen to a lot <laughs> on, in tour. So I'm yeah. trying to like branch out to that, but it's so not your style right, right now. It's okay. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm enjoying it when I hear it now and again in camp. I'm like, I know that song. I'm yes. I'm trying to <laughs> listen out. Uh, if you could be any animal, what would you be? Oh. A lion and why a lion because <laughs> we did that personality test at yeah. world cup last year and i got golden retriever <laughs> which i i love being a golden retriever because I, I i like being a loyal you know the traits of a golden retriever is meant to be like loyal and that kind of person so but i always get pulled up for being a fake lion by Trillene, so oh, so you'd like <laughs> yeah, to be a like, real lion, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Let's say that, sure. Put me as a lion, lion. Um, <laughs> pet hates, and excuse the pun from talking about animals into being pet hates. Um, no connection. <laughs> Are there anything like anything on tour that particularly like grinds your gears when you're like around people? Um... What people do too much it's like just messy messiness but messy roomie roomies like, mm, messy I like, roomies I always hope that my room is going to be a tidy one <laughs> oh What's it's your... probably too much information yeah hit me I don't know okay when <laughs> we're in camp and like we've got a change room that's quite small and it's very connected to the toilets <laughs> and the girls just need to go right before like we step onto the field yeah don't love that. Um, yeah, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, let me be in my own environment without considering the need yeah. to gag. <laughs> yes, that's it. I, like, I understand you. nature. I understand nature, and then you got to go when you got to go. But I personally just cannot deal <laughs> with it. <this>. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. But continue on. Continue on. Love it. Maybe we need to ask <laughs> Berg to get some. Um, Air spray yeah air freshener for the toilets that could be a really <laughs> important addition to the, the game day kit <laughs> just to so that Tanya can avoid dry ratching well yeah, so that everyone that. can There's a, there is a solid dread having to go to the bathroom in the change rooms before playing I agree yeah. that is a problem <laughs> okay cool. we'll take this Not higher we'll take this higher <laughs> <laughs> um beach or snow Oh, definitely beach. Early mornings yeah. or late nights? Uh, early mornings. Okay. Night in or night out? Night in. Being a homebody, night in. Nice. Birthday or Christmas? Homebody and an old person, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Being an older girl and a homebody, I, night in. I completely <laughs> speak the same language as you right there, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> um, birthdays or Christmas? 
Uh, Christmas. Yeah. Cats or dogs? So, dogs. For sure. Uh, have you had any surgeries because of rugby? Yes, I what? did in uh, uh, ACL reconstruction. In... So that was in... Uh, that happened at the end of 2020. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, tore my ACL in 2020 and had 2021 off with just yeah. rehabbing and then made my re- had my return year in 2022. And but I've already... Um, in 2022. Yeah, boom. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I, I had already torn my ACLs before. So when I was um, playing netball, when I was... How old was I? I've been like 14. I wow. Tore my, yeah, I was quite young. Tore my ACL and then did the rehab or I don't know if you'd call it rehab back then. Yeah. <laughs> but uh did my rehab and um returned and on one of my first few games, I think it was my second game I played, I told my other one. Yeah. Far but out. Traumatic. And so I think I yeah, I was it was only a year apart kind of thing. Wow. That I did that. So yeah, that wasn't fun as a no as a younger girl. And I was pretty competitive, like I, and I loved like netball. And yeah. Like, like playing for ACT, like you know, I thought I'd be pretty good, and I could make this a thing and try and, yeah, you know, get to a high level, and then tearing both my ACLs, it kind of, like, just set me back, and I was like, no, nah. I like kind of gave up playing after yeah. that second ACL because it was just too much. So how my so. Parents. What was the time frame between the sec the first and the second one? Like a year? I think yeah, I think like a year it would have been. Wow. Like because I just I had just done my rehab yeah. the way that I was meant to. And then what once I was allowed to return, I returned and then I busted my other ACL. Man, that sucks. It's, yeah. It's caused me a few issues like since yeah. then I go this I think I'm gonna have arthritis. In, I'm sure we all laughed, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, but and, and then yeah. you did your third ACL playing rugby. Yeah. Yeah. So was it was, in contact or was it? Um, so it was training for the, with the Brumbies for the Chikorovsky Cup. Yeah. Um, which used to be a comp. I um, don't think they do that anymore. Um, and it was bag contact so I ran into a into a bag like into two people coming in um with their bags and kind of got jolted like and yeah Yeah. my knee me and my knee just went and I knew straight away because I've felt it before damn because I I just um like I just started to love rugby like uh, we had a really fun season like in 2020 yeah, made it to the grand. Oh, that... Yeah, yeah, made it to the grand final. Didn't win that one. Um, but it was just like I was really enjoying rugby at the end of that year. So yeah, that was a bit hard to take. Yeah, and then twenty twenty one, beginning of the year ACL. Then re- return, do your rehab through that twenty twenty one year. Play Super W twenty twenty two. Yes. That's when I made my return to rugby. Yeah. Um, in the Super W for twenty twenty two. So yeah. I, so I missed. I actually missed like so I I debuted in the inaugural season for Super W in twenty eighteen. Yeah. I only started playing rugby in twenty seventeen. So, yeah, it's been a fast track journey, I'd say. But yeah, I I started in twenty seventeen and then, um got picked in the 2018 squad for Brumbies and then 2019 didn't play because I had to have like a bit of cleanup surgery on my meniscus. Yep. And um, that ruled me out for that. Um, There's season. two surgeries in rugby. Like, you lied. Oh, sorry. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. When you have an ACL, you don't really count the other one. <laughs> like, yeah. Everything else really seems of, so, a minor. I think of the, yeah. I don't yeah. think of the, um, yeah, that's true. Um. And so I missed 2019 and then yeah. 2020 played again. Yeah. And then did my ACL at the end of 2020. 
So then I missed 2021, went back for 2022. Bang. And then here yeah. we are. Here we are. Yes. Rolling into 2024 preseason. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> final couple of questions in my quick fire. See, they aren't very quick, but oh. that's okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> Premise. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> I definitely um, thought we'd we'd finished we've that. Moved, moved on <laughs> last yeah. last couple, uh, or actually last one really. Um, how do you sleep? Do you sleep on your front, on your back, on your side? I have to sit on my sleep on my back. I cannot sleep any other way, and I have to be like a hundred percent comfortable. Yep, my husband will attest to this. <laughs> yeah, like. If I can feel his elbow like slightly on me, he gets a bump or I say like move, move, move. over. That's hilarious. <laughs> so I just have to be, yeah, comfortable. So no touch and direct <laughs> back. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Oh, weird. All right. Well, you have you have passed the quick fire questions. Congratulations. <laughs> just. <laughs> Are you sure? The poor listeners. You no, sure this fire? is this is exactly how you get to know someone. It's like yeah. it's a conversation, and I'm loving it so far. Mm. And I'm sure yeah. that they are too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you talked about how you're a project manager, and you have been mm-hmm. at a construction company for ten years. Mm-hmm. That's massive. What like what is it about project management that has kept you there for ten years? Is it <laughs> organization in terms of being Mm. structured and having like process are you process driven I am yeah yes yeah talk to me what's um yeah I actually have only been a project manager for like in the project side of the business for the last oh just after COVID so it's 2020 2021 yeah um before that I was like a business like support officer so mm-hmm. I was more in the operational side of the business, like pretty much helping project managers in the business to do their job, like just yep. HR related yep. work or IT yep. systems related work. So yeah, but moving across the PM side, it's um, been challenging, like it's new, but I definitely think being in that business support side like helped me in the role that I kind of do now. Yeah. But, I guess what's kept me here, well, it's a good company to work for. Um, they've been really, especially with my rugby, they've been really supportive. Yeah. Also, the pay is just quite good. So <laughs> that's, let's be honest. Like, yeah. Yeah. Pay as well. They're a good team to, you know, be part of. So don't know if I'll do it forever, but I also don't know what else I would do. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah haven't really thought about that, but. You don't need to right now, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's working at the moment, especially with juggling rugby and work. Like, I'm really, like, thankful to have a workplace that allow me to take the leave, like, to tour and stuff. That's And that would be, like, a reason enough, like, especially for the short term, like, yeah, staying with them would be, yeah. that would be reason enough because they're, yeah, really supportive of, like, the rugby journey that I'm on so yeah fair enough what um like how do they support like are they do they just fully back what you do and understand the rugby do you have a great boss like how do they make it work Mm. when you're not there do you share projects like big projects with people or yeah so um so at the moment I'm so previously, sorry, I was on a software development project, which was like a single project. Whereas at the moment, I'm actually like, I work in defense. So, and Air Force, um, Ooh. like RAF is our, our client. So, um, and it's more a program management role. So there's like multiple projects that we like look after kind of thing, but not like very detailed, not t- to like, yeah, it's very high level management of these projects. So, yeah, so sorry, going on a tangent here, but working for defense um, and within Air Force, I have like it can be quite tricky being client facing with the like, like that. I'm actually like they will notice that I'm not there, but because they're so supportive, 
the Air Force are, like team are actually really supportive. And my boss is actually, um, he is the manager of the military men's rugby team. So he went to the Rugby World Cup um, because they have the Rugby yeah. World Cup and the yeah. Military World Cup in in sync. Like so, he was yeah he went over. So he gets it, which is really good. Like he he understands. He's an ex rugby player, so it's been really good to be put onto a project where the client was also a rugby lover, because then it yeah. made it a lot easier to sort of ask for that time off kind of thing. Um, what a special mm. wicket you've got going there. Yeah. Um, you well, talked a lot about, well, not a lot, but you've touched on religion <laughs> and family um, yep. in the quick fire part. Talk to me like religion, culture and family are t- sort of three big pillars of your life as far as I know. How how are they with supporting your <laughs> your dreams and goals and and the sacrifices and the chances, they're not sacrifices, the chances that you <laughs> take to to drive this rugby dream at the moment. Like family obviously huge to you, your your husband as well. Like what's the like the support like or how does family play into that? Yeah, so family is like the main pillar, I'd say. Like I have a relationship with God, but it's not as like strong um so my family yeah uh like very supportive my mom when I first started playing rugby was a bit apprehensive but I think that's because in our culture like you know the women don't really play rugby um and so and she's from an older generation so she doesn't really understand that things are changing and that we can play so but she's grown to like be really supportive it was just initially she just yeah. was like oh no, you, I don't want you to get hurt, like kind of thing. Whereas my dad's always been like, yeah, go for it. Like he's he's always been supportive because he's, you know, ex-rugby player as well and um, he's he's been great. But, yeah, Trav as well, like my husband, he's been super supportive. Um, like he is the one who pushes me probably the most out of anyone, like to – do my extras that he knows like I talk about oh we've got our running prescribed to us now and he'll make sure that I go out and do it and he'll come and he'll offer to run with me but I'm always like no (laughs) no because I know that I know that he's a really good runner like he's um endurance runner so he's like running with me would be and I'll just be like no you look like you're almost enjoying this so I'd rather you just come and time me but he's been really good like yeah he comes he also like he's the one who says all right get up let's go throw the ball and he'll come down and there's this netball court that we go and I like it's you know got a ledge kind of thing that he stands up on and I'm like at a lower level to him and I'm just like we just go and I hit the ball like I hit my throws to him and yeah he's really good like that like he's always pushing me to eat better and work harder to be part of that 23 so yeah family yeah super supportive and I think I've said that a few times but yeah yes so when you I'm going to go just a little off track here but when you like throw and do your reps like do you how do you um uh I don't know challenge yourself or like keep your accountability to whether it's a successful throw like do you just throw until you get tired do you throw until you do like 10 good ones in a row like what's your like process if you go down to that netball court to do some throws how do you judge your throwing or is it like Mm, technique mm, based or yeah it's it's probably the second one that you said about like setting a number and a a goal for how many because you know being a full-time worker like we don't have much time at the end of the day to like we're chasing sunlight kind of thing so sometimes I just have to set a goal of like I'm gonna hit 100 or 200 throws when we get there and so I just kind of counted down with him and and then towards the end like when I'm with for the last 10 throws I'll like really judge like where it's hitting like kind of thing and if it's not good enough then I'll discount that rep kind of thing and just do it again so yeah kind of just it's more based on like quantity like just making sure I'm getting the reps, reps when I go down there yeah just any reps in 
it's cool a good thing in my mind does Trav turn around and, and say, oh, you didn't finish your throw there? Or like, does he, is he astute to your detail that you focus on? Or is it you going, oh, I didn't finish with my fingers or I didn't bet, you know, yeah. like. It's who, more me. Like you? he's kind of, he's just doing the catching a lot of the time, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'll just instruct him to um, like do things, I don't know trying to think what <laughs> like I I make him like walk in yeah to, as if timing. he's walking into the yeah. line out and like put his hand up and that's when I have to kind of throw it so I'll be like yeah like I do little things like that with him because he doesn't fully understand he's not a, a rugby he didn't grow up playing rugby or anything like that so yeah kind of have to guide him but he's always happy to do it so I love that yeah and in terms of culture you're you're obviously Australian but you have <laughs> some some heritage to you what is, where where is your family from um Samoa. Samoa. so yeah I'm Samoan both my parents, both parents born and born and raised in Samoa and then they came to Australia in the 80s and and has that had a, has does culture have a big part in your life does yeah it culture? does like yeah. Uh, yeah I'm yeah I'm I'm really proud to be Samoan and um you know, like my family back home in Samoa, like one of my cousins is like part of the, oh, he's just you know, maybe the FIFA, like the soccer body over there in Samoa, yeah. like he works for, but he's always like, oh, are you going to play for Samoa? Like yeah. like one day, like when he heard that I was playing rugby and I was like, oh, probably not. I don't really know how to play yet. So <laughs> probably not like, yeah. Um. No, but yeah, my culture, like I'm I'm super proud to be both Samoan and Australian for sure. And and then I actually bought this book. Yeah. Oh, sorry, stories. No, please. Oh, I just I bought this book right before Laurie O'Reilly. Um, and it's a like Samoan language book because unfortunately growing up here I didn't really learn the language and so and I I'm not embarrassed. I just wish I I really wish I knew how to speak Samoan. So yeah, I bought this book. So now that it's off season and there's probably a bit more time, I'll have a go at. Sort have of you, has it has it been opened much native yet? Language. Has it been opened? No, not really, because I, gonna... I just haven't had the time. Well, there's no time like the present. I expect that yeah. you know. Next time I talk to you, you're going to give me a sentence or two that you've learned. <laughs> I mean, I can like yeah, the basic stuff in Samoan I know, but I want to be able to go over to somewhere and hold a conversation with my elderly family like aunties and uncles and stuff like that that's so special (laughs) um so I'm going to jump we're sort of doing a bit of a jump around but talk to me more about your rugby journey so you grew up you played netball you played some touch footy you went to a owls training session because your friend asked you to go because you play touch Mm. (laughs) that's it pretty much that's how it started (laughs) then what yeah so what what position were you playing so I started as a number 10 which was really funny because you didn't know the rules (laughs) didn't know anything about rugby I watched my brother growing up that's it yeah so I yeah I I joined us and they chucked me in at number 10 so I was I did start in the backs and I was a center for the Brumbies in in the 2018 Super W as well um but yeah it was in oh sorry 2018 2019 didn't play 2020 so 2020 is actually the first year that our season that I played hooker so that year when I returned I was like, oh, I kind of want to give like back row a go. I wanted to be a back rower. And the um, coach at the time was like, oh, like, how do you feel about playing front row? I was like, I would not know what to do in yeah. the front row. What do you mean? Like I was yeah, yeah, pretty apprehensive to play. And I was like, I've never, and then they were like, oh, we reckon you could learn how to play hooker. And I was like, I don't even know how to throw the ball. Like, what do you mean? So, <clears throat> yeah, it was only, only in 2020 that I started playing hooker, which is pretty crazy to say. Cause, Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So, was, yeah. so what was 
what was the desire? I mean, I, I, I'm going to stereotype right here and say there aren't many 10s and 12s that I know <laughs> that are looking to move into that, pretends particularly, that look at the forwards and go, I'd like to be there. What was mm. it that wasn't satisfying enough as a 10 or a centre for you to go, mm, I think those forwards look like they're having more fun? Um, I think it was like a conversation. Well, yeah, they did look like they were having fun. Con- yeah, <laughs> doing all these different things in the scrum and the line out. But no, it was my coach, Chiga. He kind of had a word to me. It was like, look, there's not many hookers in Australia at the moment in the female, in the women's game. Um, This might be a good opportunity for you to sort of get on the pitch a bit more or get a few more yeah. minutes. So if you want to have a crack. And and that's what I thought about when I moved across is I might actually get more game time because it's a bit competitive, like in that centre position yeah. in the Brumbies. So I was like, and probably, yeah, if you think about it, like I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't think I would compete with our centres in the Wallaroo space at the moment. So, yeah, his advice to move across um, to get a bit more game time was kind of the reason why I was like, yeah, I'll move to front row. Because, yeah, initially I was like, oh, I really want to try back row. But I kind of just went straight to front row. <laughs> so, and what yeah. was your first impressions of front row? Do you remember? It's scary. Yeah, it was a bit scary, but not so much the scrum because Chiga, our coach, like, he's a really good scrum coach, so he was able to really help me out there. Um, it was more the throws. I yeah. And I'd still to this day, like, oh, not, you know, it's not the, my favourite thing to do, throw the ball. Like, it's such so much pressure. It's like throwers and kickers, like, the eyes are on you. Like, <laughs> and often lineouts when they go – even though it might not be the hooker's fault, but when it doesn't work, you're the first one we blame. (laughs) (laughs) Well, not even just the, you know, (laughs) my line out jumpers or whatever. It's like just people who are watching the game. They don't, they're like, oh, they'll just think. So yeah. Anyways, it was more the throw that kind of scared me, but um, going into the front row, like in the scrums, I felt, all good because let's be honest the props do a lot of that work (laughs) I wouldn't know I'm not in the front row (laughs) so I've heard (laughs) um yeah and so you move you transitioned to hooker played Mm -hmm. at hooker for the 2021 no you didn't play 21 2020 season and then rehabbed your ACL through 2021 started pre-season for Brumbies end of 2021 were you back running by then um I was yeah I did start when they started pre-season in 2021 because I had my surgery my ACL reconstruction in 2020 in November yeah so yeah you're well uh, running by then yeah yeah yeah. Yes. So then, and then yeah, played 2022. Yeah. Sorry. Played 2022 for Owls, for Brumbies, and named in the Wallaroo squad mm. 2022 after Super W. Were you already in there from 2020? Yes. No, you wouldn't have uh, been. No, no, I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. So I got a call after the Super W season 2022. Um, Who called you? To. Jay. Yeah. Jay Trigani. Yeah. And he called me to be part of the bar bars. So oh. that there was that exhibition, if, well, what would you call it? Exhibition match um, against Japan before the Fiji test match that you guys had. So that's where I got my call. And oh, I remember that <laughs> that call from Jay. I was like, when he said, oh, I'm the Wallaroos coach, I was like, what? <laughs> he has my number. What's going on? <laughs> Who gave it to him? <laughs> yeah. So it was the Barbars that kind of got me in and then. Awesome. Played that Barbars game against Japan, which was a really good game of rugby. Yeah, it was, especially for a group of girls who just came together like a few days earlier, like from different teams to just um, 
have a match. Like I didn't know half the team, more than half the team that played. So got to play that Barbas game, which was awesome. But I also got to stay um, in camp with you Wallaroos girls. And that's um, because unfortunately one of the girls like was sick. And so I was invited to actually stay on on tour with you guys even that whereas yeah whereas the um you know the rest of the um uh, barman's girls like went back home after that game that was yeah. awesome to stay and and you know I was even told that I had an opportunity to get picked for that Fiji side if I like trained you know and I was yeah. like oh god like yeah surely I won't but I'm enjoying the experience and I'm grateful for the opportunity to just stay in so that was cool um so, yeah, and then after that, at the end of that camp with you guys for the Fiji test, I had a chat with Jay and he kind of said that I would be ad- added to the wider pony squad, which was not known to me before. So that was really cool. I was like, oh, no way. Like that was a really exciting moment for me. So um, special. Yeah. And then pack four comes along. Did you, yep. you didn't tour for no. four? No, nah, I didn't tour for that one. Um, so, yeah, I didn't tour for that one. Kept playing club um, whilst you guys were over there, which was good. And I, I don't know, I did a lot of, like, work in terms of, like, just trying to make sure I'm playing hooker every time because I was kind of um, having to move between, like, hooker and back row for – just to meet the needs of the coach, the, yeah. the owls coach at the time, yeah. he wanted me to kind of, but I kept pushing, you know, saying I need like throws. I need yeah. to yeah more reps at, at hooker. And I like a, a few of the games were being recorded and I knew that. So I was pushing our data analyst to make sure she got those games up so that I could clip it for, for Jay. Yeah. And cool. Like I, I was pretty <laughs> annoying with my clips. Like I was just, clipping every game that I could and sending it through to them and then and then I got like um I got to tour for Laurie Riley I got picked for that camp which was yeah like awesome I felt like the work that I did at club level and like being persistent um with my clipping and doing all that work like yeah I think that's what helped me get like that opportunity uh yeah which was, yeah, that was awesome. And then got to go away to the World Cup as well. So um, Magic. And then debut game two or three? Was Wales game two? Uh, I think it was game three. Game three. uh, Yeah. Black Ferns, then Scotland, and then Wales. Amazing. So, yeah. And then you've played every game this year, 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. <laughs> How good. And what that a whole, yeah. yeah, it's insane to think about it. Like I think this year's been since the World Cup has been pretty special and a lot of fun. So Yeah. That's that, incredible. And also to to see you go from not being picked, you know, not in the picture, I suppose, mm-hmm. to yep. in the picture and not being picked to getting a couple of minutes at the end of games to suddenly now like well starting you've been the the, the mm. starting hooker for the back end of this this year and absolutely the competition is is amazing between well yourself and Addy i think the two of you really help make each other better um and i I've, I've, i haven't said it i haven't talked about it much on this podcast but i think one of the best parts that I see when I look at positions or people in Wallaroos is how good the environment gets when the competition help each other. Like you're challenging each other to be better Hmm. and you want to see each other succeed. And that's an awesome place for a team to be when you're doing something because ultimately it's for the team, it's for the best of the team, but you're going to do everything in your power to also be the one that's doing it, but yeah. you can still celebrate the successes of each other. And I think that's 
such a positive sign for high performance and and where Australia can go. And when I talk about this, you know, socially, I use the hookers as a, as my as my exam my prime example <laughs> of this. And I think that mm. that's like that's got to be credit to yourself and Addie as characters because it mm. it comes from the people. No one teaches that. You can't say to someone you're supposed to support them because they will like it will help the team because mm. everyone has their own motivation to play rugby and everyone has their own motivation of wanting a position in a team. But the way you two particularly um, interact and support and challenge to me is the epitome of what high performance should be um, and and the one of the key pillars of a successful team. So I want to give some kudos to you <laughs> because it is – it make it gets me excited when I think about the way you two train, and I, yeah, yeah, I love it. I I think it's so well, exciting. That's so nice to hear. I actually, yeah, fully agree. Like, and being the new hooker out of Ash Addy that came in, like they were they were both super helpful. But yeah, Addy's been like, yeah, it was a breath of fresh air, I guess. Like it. It was, it wasn't a chat because oh, I don't want to sound ungrateful because I definitely learned parts of like how to be a hooker and like in, in, in Brumbies and initially in my, but it was competitive. Like it was competitive and, um, but coming into the space with Addy, like she, it's been a really healthy competition and, you know, we, we're share, you know, we're sharing reps. We're happy to help each other. Like we're, I actually gave a shout out to her at a panel like that I had to do on last last week for Brumbies and I the question was like who who's like your mentor and I yeah. I said I don't really have like one that I can really pinpoint but I did yeah. just give a little shout out to Addie and say like that you know being new in the space she's like always helped me and like when and even with these last few games where I've got picked for that starting role like it's been nothing but like respect from her and and like and love and like she's just been really really good she's a good girl and I appreciate her a lot for so special helping me out in this space um she's she's showed me a lot like with how she learns and like so we get given a new set of like line out moves and she'll she's like gone through it with me on how like she writes it down and we've we've sat in the team room together and gone through it and it's been like really good because now I do like a similar thing to what she does like she's just help she's just a helpful girl and it's not yeah it's just a healthy competition which is really good and it's nice because yeah if we're no matter who's starting or coming off the bench we're like happy for each other and yeah. it's 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 you're right I think it'd be good if like a lot of our like positions in the team can behavior so like a similar way um because yeah in, in terms of like high performance and like making the team better I think yeah. it's definitely been a good relationship we've had yeah and don't get me wrong it's not a statement saying that every other position you know is out to get each other or there is a yes. toxic environment yeah. it's just no I think no yeah there's there's lots of growth that can happen across individuals um where we're not completely self-focused because it's been an interesting journey for Wallaroos where because you don't spend a huge amount of time together um, or in the past we haven't spent a lot of time together that you end up doing things almost more for you than you do for your team. Um, you know, it's a personal journey, whereas the more time mm. we've spent together, I think the more the group has learnt that we're doing it for something greater and you're always doing it for something greater. You're wearing a Jersey that gets handed down um, and yeah. is never yours. Um, but mm -hmm. I think that the more time we've spent together, the more we've been able to appreciate that we're all doing the same things and we're doing it for the same reasons. So the, but it's just, it is really nice to see that some positions are particularly good at sharing. Mm. Yeah. No, it's definitely, yeah, I agree. And it's just it's just been a good balance with us, I guess, is what I was kind of trying to say is that yeah. 
we both know that we're individually working on ourselves, but we're also happy to help each other as well. And we yeah. understand like the bigger goal as well yeah. together. So, yeah. So when have you taken a chance? I feel like you've already listed a few examples yeah. <laughs> of this throughout, but is there like, if you want to re-emphasize or give me an mm. example of when Tan has taken a chance and it paid off. Yeah. I think, yeah, I guess I already answered it before and I reckon it's when I took the chance to move across from the backs to the forwards and yeah. and moving into that, like, front row position and giving it a crack to hopefully, like, improve my chances of, like, getting more game time and, yeah, now I'm, I'm playing at the highest level. So, wearing the number two yeah, jersey I'd say I'd say that was a good chance like a good chance yeah. that I took yeah yeah what a great opportunity and a and decision as well mm. and then when has someone taken a chance on you it's oh, a hard one uh I, I don't know maybe like Jay um kind of yeah, taking a chance on me last year and bringing me into that bar bar squad. But then it goes a bit further back with um, my Brumbies coach at the time was Dan Hawk, Hawkey. Yeah. And I know he, I know he put in a word for me to to that to that level, um, to just keep an eye out and see what you think of this girl. And yeah, I know he's been a really good um advocator for me, I guess. And so uh, like yeah I'm always grateful to him as well so but why yeah you, with Jay sorry why do you think Jay or Hawkey took the chance on you like what did Hawkey see in you that he was um, like it's a hard question to answer but I think mm. as women <laughs> we need to get better at answering this sort of question yeah um Hawkey I think he just thought I was like a good like around the park kind of rugby player. He knew that I had like a lot to learn with being a hooker like at set piece time, I guess. But he knew I was like, I, I think he knew I was good at um, around the park. And so, yeah, I think him kind of, um, you know, p- putting in a word for me or whatever was like a way for him. Like I, I, he knew that if I could get into that, if I could get my foot in the door, I could improve my set piece at hooker time. Um, my like being a hooker yeah. at set piece time. So, and then with Jay, like I think we've had conversations towards the end of this year. Like, I think it comes to down to hard work. Like I think he knows that I put in the work in terms of, you know, going. He knows that I go out and throw the ball, and he knows I'm try my best to do reps um like he he put out a challenge mid-year last year like before I was um like yeah when when you guys were at pack four I think or just after you got back he put out a challenge for us hookers to sort of like throw the ball at the goalposts like and made sure like he, he said that you know you had to hit this many balls and and give me a score out of 10 um and with that challenge, he kind of told me that, like, I was really diligent with that. And, yeah, he just he's just said before, like, he's he thinks I'm a hard worker. So there's, there's the answer. I think that's why he's <laughs> taken that chance on me. So, yeah. Oh, it is hard to talk about that stuff. I'm telling it you. is. <laughs> and I think, like, it's also important that we can look back at why someone has believed in us or taken a chance on us because so often we not neglect the fact that they have given us the the opportunity but we neglect to consider that we have an influence on why someone else chooses or takes a chance on us Um, Mm -hmm. and often there's a small pat on the back that we can give ourselves when someone does select you or choose you for something um, or risk take make a risky decision or invest in you because it's usually because you've done something 
that they have seen enough of to believe that you're not risky. It's not a chance, like mm. it's a calculated mm. risk. <laughs> so um, I think it's important that we reflect on those sometimes to just almost reiterate our own strengths without being like, what's my strength? Because someone else has already told you what your strength is by what, mm. you know, how you're being rewarded for it. So well done for answering it. It is an yeah. easy but The more we think <laughs> about it, like it, it reiterates what, you know, what you know is a core success factor for you, work rate, you know, mm. your diligence and commitment to something. And I think that mm. needs to be celebrated. Thanks. As uh, we sort of look to wrap up this podcast, uh, I want to ask you if you were to give some advice to your younger self, what would it be? Oh, that's a hard one. Could that is be a hard one. Anything. I don't really. <laughs> Could be about. Uh, give give rugby a go (laughs) (laughs) give rugby a go earlier yeah I do think about it sometimes I can't yeah like definitely started later on in life so why Um, did why didn't uh, you play rugby then um earlier was it because you didn't know you could was it because you weren't interested is it what your brothers just did kind of what yeah it's just what my brothers did it's what males did in my eyes and Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of it, like my I didn't see any of it to be honest. So um yeah, I just played netball and touch football because that's what I thought I was meant to do. I didn't yeah, I genuinely didn't see it um as a sport to play uh, um, in growing up and yeah, I'm all, sometimes envious of like some of the girls they like horsey, like talking about her starting when she was eight years old I'm like that's so cool like I didn't even like I wouldn't have even known that like rugby was a avenue for me then so hopefully you know young girls now are seeing that it is an opportunity and that you know it is it's a great sport for for them to play and that they they have that opportunity to play because I didn't see it back then and but that doesn't discount like where I am now I'm still you know happy and enjoying the journey that I'm on, even though it's a short, it's been a short one. Still good. Hundred percent, I agree with that. I, I feel the same way, and I go. It's not necessarily a oh, I wish I had. I just think, bloody hell, these young girls are going to have such a good, like mm. the skill level is going to be so yeah. good because they have played it their whole life. Like the things mm. that are maybe less natural to you and I because we haven't been playing for as long, although I have been playing for longer than you. Um, yeah. I still think of like where the age we, we started. Yes, where we were capable of picking things up quicker, but the innate skill that is developed when you start something from a young age, these girls in the future are going to be so much better than we are now. Um, yeah. And that's such <laughs> a cool thing. Yeah, uh, A little envious, but... It's cool yeah. because we've got a different life experience. Yeah, for sure. And it's like learning the rules too. Like that's taken a lot of <laughs> like yeah. the last few years. Like was just learning the laws of the game, whereas these girls will learn when they're quite young. And so by the time they're at this age playing, you know, at this level, won't need to worry about any of the rules. They'll, they'll all the laws, they'll know it. <laughs> It'll be natural and more part of it, ingrained yeah. in their growth. Um, okay, final question. I ask everyone, what is something that you're doing, be it reading, watching, listening, uh, outside of rugby that is either challenging you or making you think? Hmm. Oh, so um, earlier this year, I bought, I actually bought a house. I bought um, my family home. So the, wow. the the home that my parents, and well, where I grew up and where my parents are living right now. So, yeah, we, uh, Trav and I bought that home and it's about a 1,200 square metre, like, land. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at, yeah, um, we're looking at building a second 
residency, like a granny flat style house. So yeah, and the goal is to eventually have my parents like live in there and kind of retire in there and that we would live in the main house kind of thing. And that's, but that's been a challenge <laughs> just because I'm like the, the whole building process and like looking into it. We're not very far into that process. We're um, just looking at plans and um, yeah, but that's been a challenge, or especially time um, wise, like haven't had much time to focus on that throughout the year but now that it's off season we can look into that a bit more but it's just not even though I'm a project manager in a building and construction firm <laughs> it's a different space like what well, I'm not that kind of project manager I'm not the one that's project actually project building manager. the house yeah. Yeah, yeah like it's I'm more client side so don't see as much of it but luckily Travis is an electrician so he has a bit more of a um you know, knowledge base yeah. for that stuff yeah so that's that's probably what we're yeah I'm doing now outside of rugby is just focusing on like getting getting that started the process of building that second house how are you approaching it is it like working with people that you know you know who who can draw up a plan or are you reading are you podcast yeah. like how are you getting this knowledge uh a lot of pinterest I was looking yeah. at a lot of Pinterest like floor plans just to have a look um there. A few TikTok videos too to see what people are doing to to build granny flats. But no, my um father in law is also a builder and Trav's brother is a um carpenter. My brother's a carpenter. Um yeah, we've got a few trades like <laughs> in the yeah. family that can help. And so I think uh, Trav's dad will end up helping with the actual build and like he's been giving advice on what what the steps are what the process is so at the moment we have just we're just talking to a draftsman slash architect to see what we can do with the space that we have and that's where um, we're at now um but luckily yeah we have help we have some subject matter experts that can <laughs> help us through the process which is good what an interesting answer. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that at all. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's so cool. You bought a house. I'm not, yeah. Yeah. I don't feel like you promoted that at all. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, <laughs> well, I don't read much and I, well, I'm trying to be more of a reader, but I, you know, the question was on what am I reading or what am yeah. I watching? I'm like, I don't really read a lot. Yeah. Um, no, that's so cool. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> if I asked you this again in like three months, I would expect you to say, I've been reading and learning my Samoan language book and here <laughs> is a little bit of, you know, Samoan language that I could tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'll um I'll wait for, for that to just happen naturally at camp next time I see you. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Hopefully. <laughs> um, Tan. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a great chat and I am finishing with a big smile on my face um, because I think it's so cool to reflect on what, like what a short, wild journey you've been on in, in the rugby world um, and a successful journey. Uh, and that has to be a credit to you. So thank you for your time and thank you for oh. joining me on Life of Chats no. podcast. Thank you for having me.